Hey nerds, Todd Simmons coming back at you with a little more Toddimation. Uh, today we had a special request from a Ruben Rios. So I wanted to thank you Ruben for the comments uh, and all the support. Uh, Ruben wanted to know how to be able to import um, tens, hundreds, thousands possibly um, user information to be used for Meraki authorization or the 802.1x. Some people call it radius, uh, but uh, Meraki has a way to where you can input users uh, if you want to create an SSID, uh, which of course is uh, Wi-Fi, and you want to authenticate them with a username and a password uh, from users that were stored inside the Meraki dashboard. So that's what we're going to do today. Uh, I'm not going to import thousands, but I'm certainly going to show you how to do it. Uh, just to make sure that you know where we're at, uh, I did want to show you uh, inside the Meraki dashboard, specifically what we're looking at. So if you look at the screen here and we look at the, uh, the network, now I've got a network brought up. Uh, and if we go to network wide, uh, under configure, there's a users option in here. Uh, now these users can be of different types. We're going to focus on the 802.1x or, you know, the radius type authentication uh, for users when they're connecting to an SSID. Uh, I will say that you have to make sure that your SSID is actually set up for Meraki authorization. Because uh, if you try to add a user um, through the, its authorizations to a particular SSID and that SSID is not using Rocky Auth or 802.1x, uh, you will get a failure. So, so make sure any of the SSIDs that you're going to specify uh, inside the Excel spreadsheet that I'm going to show uh, are actually uh, capable of, of using those types of users. When you add a user, you just can't add a user uh, and not specify an SSID or some sort of authentication. Now there's other methods, you know, VPN uh, users and stuff like that. I'm not covering those uh, in this particular video. We're talking specifically about uh, SSIDs and users that we, you would maybe have to manually add uh, through the user portal. So that's where we're at here with this uh, user portal here when we look at it. Uh, so this is where we're gonna add. As you can see, I've got one in here uh, it's just me at this particular point, uh, but we're going to add five or six more to that. Uh, so let's go over to the code real quick. Um, a couple of things that, that I like to use. If you've watched a video of mine before, you've seen uh, that I use the .env file. And with the .env file, I'm pulling in uh, particular things that we're going to need when we're interacting with the Meraki dashboard, uh, specifically the API key. I don't like showing my API key. Uh, obviously, I delete them after I do the videos just in case. Uh, but, you know, when I'm, I'm using this type of automation uh, and I'm providing it to other users, having that .env file to store that information is just a better way to do it. Uh, so here's the three different things that I'm getting from the uh, .env file uh, using the config from decouple. Uh, so I'm going to import an API key. Uh, an org ID, I'm not actually using the org ID here because I'm going to get the um, the network ID from the Excel spreadsheet, uh, but we could certainly do that there. And then the type right now is just 802 uh, underscore one capital X because <clears throat> that's the actual authentication type that we're adding or the user types that we're adding into the Meraki dashboard. Um, I do have this warnings here just because uh, if you're doing any type uh, of validation inside your Excel spreadsheet. It just throws an error in here and, and I don't want to constantly see errors. So I've got that in there. Uh, the first thing that we're doing is the uh, a quick definition of a method. If, if you've watched my videos before, uh, the stuff from Excel, the, the reason I like to use Excel is because you can have multiple worksheets inside the workbook. We could do it via CSVs. Well, then you have to have 20, 30 CSVs. Uh, so the way that I do most of my automation inside of an Excel spreadsheet is allowing us to use the different worksheets that are in there. Um, and that's what this get data method does. Uh, as you can see, we've got an Excel doc uh, and that Excel doc is this um, add 802.1x.xlxs. So it's an actual Excel doc. Uh, let's pull that doc up just real quick so you can see it. Uh, I have it um, zoomed in just to make sure that you can see the fields. The fields up here at the top, you, you can make these fields anything that you want. I've kind of just identified them based on what the Meraki API likes to see. Um, but network ID, name, email, password, SSID number, and expires at. And if you look at the expires at, it, it looks a little strange. That's actually the uh, ISO 8601 time format. Um, you have to use this. Uh, you can even add to this if you want. Um, 
if you're looking to do, say, a time zone um, offset. Uh, at this point, I'm not. I'm just going to, you know, make these expire on uh, March 3rd, 2024, and what was that? April 1st, 2024. And then two of them just set for never. If you leave that blank, it's going to error out. You have to have something there. Uh, a lot of people just put never. Um, but I didn't want to show it with never only because you might have a contractor or somebody that's coming in. You, you only want to give them 30 days access or a week access. Uh, so this is a great place to actually specify how long that account's going to be active. That way you don't have to remember to go and turn it off uh, after that person leaves if it is a temporary type account. So this is the information. It's pretty simple. This is the network ID. Once again, if, if you don't know how to get the network ID for the particular network that you're working on, uh, I've done other Rocky videos that show you how to go get all of the networks for a particular organization or all of the organizations and networks for a particular API key. Uh, so you can watch those videos there. Uh, but network ID is just going to be the network that you want to add them to. And of course, just their name, their email. This is a requirement because this is going to be their login. Uh, what their password is going to be, the SSID number, and of course the expires at. Now there's two other fields. Uh, one was is admin, and then the other one was email their password. I did not add those here. You could certainly add those here if you wanted. Uh, you'll see in the code uh, that I wrote, I'm just defaulting those to is admin is no, because uh, they would probably already be in there. Uh, that's why I did that. And then the email uh, password to people. Um, I don't really like the idea, so uh, I did not include that, but you could certainly add uh, that in here. They're Booleans, right? So if anything is actually in the Excel field or in the, the cell, um, it's true. So even if you put false in there, there's a value there, so it's going to return true. So very, very simple Excel file. Once again, um, you can use as many um, worksheets in the Excel file that you want. This one particularly, I named Wi-Fi underscore 802.1x. So my code is actually going to come and look for this particular worksheet. Uh, so you could just add a worksheet to your current uh, Excel workbooks that you have, uh, and it would actually go find this worksheet. So let's just minimize that uh, and move on. So now we're back at the management portal, and then we're back at the code. Uh, the code is very simple as far as getting the information from the worksheet. It's going to look for the tab, just like I said right here. Um, as long as that, uh, that tab is there, it's going to return values. The values that uh, I've, I've used here is just users because that's what they are. I, I left a couple of comments in here just to kind of help you out. This other is if you wanted to add another worksheet to this uh, for something else. I left this here as an example. Um, but it would take and it would put it into a list of dictionaries as well. Uh, you would just need to uncomment this other or name it appropriately. Uh, then, of course, do it here and here, whatever it was that you were looking for inside of that Excel document. So uh, the method is very simple. It's just going to return users, which is just going to be a list of dictionaries. So the overall entry will be a list. And then each of the rows that we have will be a dictionary. And the dictionary, the way that it does things, with that um, is, just to pull this back up, uh, this is going to be the key inside the dictionary. So this dictionary is uh, obviously going to have six keys. And then this is going to be the value for the key. Uh, OK, and then uh, there'll be a dictionary in each and every single, uh, for each and every single row that's here, uh, obviously, except for the headers at the top. OK, um, so very, very simple call. As you can see, there's only about 20 lines of code here. Uh, so I'm, I'm creating this list from the get data. So it's going to be the users to add. Uh, and then this is just the Meraki, how to log into your Meraki dashboard. And then with the users to add, when it returns, uh, I'm just going to go through each one of those rows at a time. Uh, and I'm going to create the authorization. So the authorizations is going to be the SSID number. Uh, so I'm going to make sure that that's an integer because that's what uh, Meraki expects it to be when it comes back. Uh, from the SSID number field. And then the expires at, once again, it's just going to be the expires at field. That has to be um, a list of dictionaries. Uh, if you're going to send that in, uh, if it's in a different format, uh, you're going to get an error from the Rocky dashboard. Uh, and then here's my call to the dashboard. Pretty simple. Um, we're just going to send the user, uh, the network, sorry, the network ID. Now you can make variables out of these if you wanted to. Um, I decided not to just because it makes the code a lot easier, a lot more condensed. Um, 
but you know you could come in here and say you know user equals network uh, user network ID and then just pass that but I'm just passing the fields because it's already in a dictionary it's nice and clean uh, coming through so uh, this is the network ID this is the email address the authorizations once again I said you it's got to be a list of dictionaries uh, is how the Meraki dashboard expects to see it uh, and that's actually the authorizations uh, and then the name on the account the password on the account, the account type, like I said, is 802.1x, uh, not dot. It's actually underscore 1x uh, is the way that it gets passed to the Meraki dashboard. Uh, and then the email password to user, like I said, I'm st setting up for false. Uh, and ad is admin is also set to false. Um, so that's pretty much it. Pretty simple code. Um, as long as you follow that particular format, and once again, you don't have to follow the format or you don't have to have the same headers. Just make sure that whatever your headers are, you're changing the values uh, here as far as what the keys are going to be. So uh, that's pretty much it. I'm going to run the code uh, and then let's take a look at what happens. So uh, inside my VS Code here, I'm just going to hit play. Uh, and like I said, there's only five, so it's only going to take a couple of seconds for it to finish. And it's done. Um, so I come back over here to my portal and I just click uh, refresh and there they are. There's uh, all of the users that I had on there. Uh, I'm a big motocross fan if y'all didn't know that by now. Um, and here are the individuals that were on it and as you can see as I scroll through, uh, some users are set for never and then other users are set for particular times. So. Um, they're in here. Uh, if you want to play with the code, you want to mess with it, obviously, you can just uh, easily out of the Meraki dashboard, uh, remove users by selecting the users that you want to remove, and then just click this remove users button. It's going to ask you OK, because if you're testing your code and that account is already there with whatever that you're testing with, it's going to give you an error. Now, you have to delete them and then save the delete here. And once you do that, then it will allow you to run the code again uh, without having to create new names because it's going to check them and make sure that uh, they're not actually already in there as far as the email address. Anything else can be different, but that email address is the primary key for these users inside the Meraki dashboard. Um, so as long as you had a different email address for somebody, it would allow you to put uh, multiple entries for the same person, but obviously a different email uh, the Meraki dashboard is considering it different. So that's it. Ruben, I really appreciate the request. Um, if anybody has a request, let me know. I'd be happy to uh, provide a video for it. Uh, I'm a nerd at heart, so I, I really like knowing that, that people are watching the videos and then, you know, they're, they want to see more. Uh, so like, subscribe. I promise you it really does mean a lot to see that subscriber count grow. Uh, and let me know any questions that uh, you have. You know, until next time. We'll talk to y'all later, nerds. Bye.